move on to this story courtesy of mix mag which i thought was fairly interesting too called alcohol free zone a clear head on sunday mornings is a gift why djs and ravers are embracing sobriety and obviously it's something that has kind of touched a lot of people especially during the pandemic with people essentially kind of questioning you know why they are doing the things that they do when it comes to drinking and taking drugs and it maybe make people kind of reassess their kind of connection or their relationship with going out and clubs and for the most part from when I've been out anyway I feel like that relationship and that connection with the majority of adults especially in the UK has somewhat severed or people have basically grown out of it or maybe discovered other hobbies that have basically filled that void and I think we're seeing it now clearly on the dance floors where a lot of the places I've been at are hardly full um, and if they are kind of semi full people are way more chill than they were prior even with the extended times we've been in lockdown I, I never really felt that people went out and went crazy if anything the craziness happened in the beginning when people were throwing raves in parks and whatnot just trying to escape from the you know from the drudgery of the news every day talking about crazy numbers of people passing away people just went to black out and kind of forget about the constant reality that they were kind of facing but I feel like clubs have definitely reflected, I wouldn't say sobriety, but I'd say a, a different relationship when it comes to drinking. And there's some really good um, examples here in this article, courtesy of uh, um, this lady, how you pronounce her name? Nyama, Nyama Ingram explores the benefits of sobriety can bring for people involved in dance music in depth chats with Patrick Turpin, Rebecca and Radio Slave. So I'll go down. I think, yeah, let's pick a Patrick Turpin. So it says here, uh, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, it says here, Patrick Turpin, uh, producer, DJ and head of a label and events brand Trick, isn't teetotal or fully sober, but is an active advocate of sober raving. In the past, he's done two long sober stretches, more than a year, including all of 2018 and more recently abstaining from eight months. Since the UK lockdown ended, each set he's performed has been sober. He says as follows. I went sober for a few reasons, mainly because I was sick of feeling horrific after a night on the drink or on a bender. I had actually started to tarnish the enjoyment of DJing a little bit too, and I was making the prospect of doing a gig seem daunting sometimes, because I knew I was in for a big one and the aftermath that followed. This was against why I got into this in the first place. I should be fully looking forward to going to gigs. Another reason was that I was so, I'm so grateful to be involved with the passion of music as a full-time career, and I wanted to take the, make the most of this opportunity. I think parting gets in the way of being productive and I knew if I wanted to reach my full potential I would have to wind it in considerably and I think that's the most I'll read the, the rest of them but that's probably the most reasonable take out of it I think in general this kind of push for sobriety in dance music is a little bit ridiculous and quite I won't say immature but it's a little bit it kind of doesn't really answer the main question and the actual main question that everyone has to kind of look themselves in the mirror at is actually why do you go out do you go out as an escape from your day-to-day -day hell or do you go out as a kind of excuse to do drugs and drink because a lot of people i feel like fall in the latter right where they could definitely go out to, as an excuse to just get on it i know i did in the beginning and i think once you start to go out more regularly and you start to go to different places and you start to experience different parties and different surroundings different crowds different quote-unquote communities and scenes you either you either kind of get a little bit um disillusioned by it and maybe you want to tap out because there's, there's too many chin strokers and too many people that take themselves too seriously and too many people that wear all black when they go party and whatnot or you fall in love with it and you think you know what i actually want to be a part of this i want to set up my own night i want to be a door person i want to maybe start a security company i want to work in a bar whatever you want to become part of it i want to dj i want to be an artist blah, 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 blah. Those are two avenues. And usually when you decide to get involved and kind of work in that industry, slowly but surely you also start to realize that the people that are at the top who you kind of idolize or watch YouTube clips of or follow on social media, they're not getting on it as much as you think they are. You would think every day would be legitimately a party. Every day is like Project X and it's not the case. And unfortunately too, I think it's twofold in that a lot of these people would promote or kind of give out this image that they were doing all those things. I think I mentioned it in the previous podcast about my kind of love-hate relationship with Post Malone, The Weeknd and Future with that respect. All three artists I really enjoy. But they do perpetuate this kind of image that they're constantly high, constantly getting fucked up. And we know that isn't the case because we know with people, especially when it comes to hip hop kind of adjacent R&B kind of acts, for the most part, the ones that did get smashed and did get on it really in a really big way are the ones that are no longer with us or music has completely suffered. But you can't be doing performances on Saturday Night Live and going on Conan, it wasn't a... Um, 
going on Stephen Colbert and doing Super Bowl halftime shows if you're always fucked up on Xanax. It just doesn't make any sense because you need to sit down and plan those shows. You need to do rehearsals. You need to make great music to get on those shows in the first place. It just doesn't happen just because you are a party boy. That's not the fact at all. So you realize that once you get on the inside. So that's becomes a thing. And then when you get on the inside, you also start to realize that sometimes balance is better. Being able to enjoy your night and be able to remember who's playing, who played what, what the what sets you enjoyed why do you enjoy this bit why this was off why this was on you can only do it if you're somewhat um if your if your senses are not as dulled as they probably would be if you were on drugs and alcohol that's basically what ends up happening and again like i think with the uk it's a difficult one because i think we've always had a very um tumultuous connection or tumultuous relationship with alcohol especially in this country we have a huge problem with that with people just drinking all the way throughout the week i remember that being a big thing that kind of a bit of an eye-opener for me when i used to work around the liverpool street area you'd leave work on a monday to a wednesday and people are you know outside of flipping pubs again Thursday to friday it makes more sense because towards the end of the week and you can see people are just wanting to unwind and kind of let loose and get ready for the weekend but sometimes on most weeks you'd see people outside of those pubs monday to friday you know especially if weather permitting having a chat catching a bit of, having a bit of booze and most likely that person might have a couple more boozes at home then more on the weekend it's like just crazy crazy amounts which then leads you to not being able to behave adequately when you go out in places and just be a bit of a nuisance which you know might explain why British people in general don't really travel that well when you go we do go on these techno weekenders we tend to be a bit of a liability all these things kind of play into it so if anything, again, one of the unintended positive consequences of COVID is that in the UK, it feels like we've suddenly grown up a bit. We've kind of figured out how to rave properly. Even the young, even the younger lot. I've been to some few younger parties at the moment with kids, you know, under the age of twenty-five and whatnot, and they are definitely um, going for it. Don't get me wrong, but it's not as wild as you would think it would be. There's still some level of um trying to be aware of your surroundings and not getting too smashed up so you can you know make sure that you're safe and whatnot i think these are all important things it continues to say dj uh records founder radio slave aka matt edwards also notes the focus on making music as a motivation of exploring sobriety i remember him saying this a lot on the djs and beers podcast that was really good too i wish they could bring that back but i guess they're all in different places now but djs and beards was really awesome during the entire pandemic basically these four is it four djs or five gathered around spoke on stream about various topics concerning djing and interviewed some of their you know um dj friends or whatnot it was a good insight to kind of see what you know DJs that sort of level talk about day to day it's kind of bullshit but still I think they all came across really well on that anyway um, Radio Slayer says as follows I guess like most people I've had moments of sobriety in my adult life and I've tried to being sober a number of times eight years ago I managed almost two years that was brought on by health issues hospitalization having my tonsils removed so I was kind of forced into it this time it's been almost a year I decided I really wanted to clean a break and it could be for a good I have a family small kids and also running red kids requires a huge amount of my time I'm responsible for a lot of artists who need my help and guidance in what is a very difficult business I should add that I'm not against Oh, I'm not, I should also add, I'm not anti-drugs or alcohol. But for me, I feel like I, I know every scenario when it comes to partying. And right now, I'd rather be productive, make music and try to survive this ongoing pandemic, which sometimes feels like a one long hangover, which definitely agree. And that's the thing. If you really want to be productive, you really want to get shit done. There's just no possibility of doing it. Like there are some people that exist out there. You know, I know some of them in the scene who are just freaks, right? They're just mutants. They're able to go out, party, come back, make tunes, make mixes, edits, you know, scour for stuff online, buy records that like they can actually do the work. Most of us can't. And if that's the case and, you know, you don't have the God given talent and you're having to work hard. For, first of all, you're having to work hard for things, Ableton and all that sort of stuff isn't coming second, you know, isn't coming that like second nature to you. You're having to go over flipping tutorials and read stuff on forums and you're finding everything difficult, everything, even beat matching is difficult for you. Then you don't have to give yourself as many um, advantages as possible. And one of the best advantages is to obviously clean up your diet, clean up your sleep, drink loads of water and make sure that you kind of rein in the getting on it. Because if you're hungover and you have, you know, and you have a foggy brain for all the drugs you've taken, it's just impossible to get work done for the most of us. Again, most of some people like that, they have that Ricardo Villalobos gene where they can kind of just get smacked and still do stuff that like most of us can't. 
Another person here was Rebecca. She said, my party in which spanned over 15 years was out of control in my end. My life was all a real standstill. I was sneaking drugs behind my then boyfriend's back. Suicidal thoughts plunged me, but still couldn't stop. I suppose deciding to go sober was because of hitting this rock bottom. One that was dwelling in for five years. I was counseling. In, I had counseling, which helped with beating myself up about taking drugs, but it still felt with, it still left me with the person who wanted to take drugs. The habit was still there with no consequence, not even myself who was always torn between wanting to party and wanting to stop the depression and drug taking got worse when i began to wake up on monday morning after a weekend of partying and more often more drugs i knew that this had to stop something clicked i had made some drastic changes i finished with my then boyfriend moved out of our home together and started going to get some help and began my path of recovery literally starting from nothing so this is a bit more of a darker kind of place to be at and again most of these people for whatever reason most of us broken um souls always find ourselves in nightlife i don't know what it is about going out that kind of makes us feel somewhat um content with life and it really makes sense because i know for me i was running away from a lot of things when i was getting on it on a really serious way and getting through flipping three and a half grams of flipping mdma on a week i mean it was it was absolutely nuts when i was first out going out and then little by little as you start to again engross yourself in things you start to build connections you start to actually want to take part you start to realize that it's not that fun really getting on it all the time it's actually better if you can try and space your sessions out a little bit more or just go out and treat it like a gig it's a bit difficult to do i've done it a few times when i went to fabric it's hard it's a bit of a mind it's a bit of a mind fuck especially if you're staying out past the hours of 3 a.m you kind of want to just have a little pep pep up but mostly if you get past that you're usually plain sailing until then then a good thing also because you're out and you're in the dark place and you're tired by the time you get home you sleep like a flipping angel you sleep, so you sleep like a baby it's really really impressive but it's a hard thing to get over because you know when you go to a gig you usually go to a gig between the hours of like 6 and 10 p.m you don't go between you know 12 a.m and 7 a.m so it's a bit of a mad one but i've definitely enjoyed that side of things going forward like treating my nights out like gigs that's definitely been a big one but like i said i think um i don't know we can yeah, I think that's basically it, but I'm not gonna read the whole thing, but you can read the whole thing later. But I think in general, I'm I'm more for the uh, Patrick Topin approach of having some level of balance in life. I think that's always important. I think for myself, I gave myself a real big um I gave myself a real big pat on the back when I was able to go through a really long sober period. I think it might have been like four months or six months and it happened to coincide with me working for a company where I was basically given a company card. I was allowed to book hotels and flights and I went to Berlin for, I think like a trade show weekend or week or something. And we stayed there for a while. We got invited to this Adidas party where Kano was performing and stuff. And it was absolutely amazing. I think we got given free shoes, if I'm not mistaken, like one of those kind of PR press kind of like things massive queue outside we got bumped to the front because we knew somebody like really good really really good like incredible event you go inside it's great sound system great insulation all this malarkey and in the bar they had this wall so they had the bar where you could just get whatever you know hot mixer you wanted in terms of liquor in terms of yeah what you wanted in terms for the menu and then they had this wall that had basically wall-to-wall -wall fridges full of flipping um heineken in their bottles all chilled because again that's something that you don't we take for granted or we don't do in the uk a lot um you go to raves and the drinks aren't even cold but you go to foreign countries especially in central europe especially places like flipping um but it's basically like Germany, it wasn't it? It's Central Europe, but you know what I mean. Um, usually in those places, like you know, even dive bars have got flipping um, mug, uh, big mugs with flipping that are chilled. They can kind of drink out of one and have an actually nice beverage or nice drink with. And I remember being in there, and they had wall to wall kind of fridges that you could just basically take a a drink out of and just enjoy it. and i was able to be sober for that entire period and again this is with the company card so everything's going to be comped um expenses everything's covered in that regard you can claim that back later so it's definitely the place to kind of indulge because it mean all the money that you have spare will just go on drugs really and you can just do what you want because you get all free drinks but i was able to be completely sober that whole time again in the heart of flipping berlin with all the best clubs around i even went to bergheim completely sober too that was a bit of a trip and i enjoyed it i'm not going to lie and i think that's when i realized okay cool i'm not really going to these places to escape i'm going to these places because i enjoy going to these places and i enjoy seeing people 
that, that I kind of listened to their mixes or heard their productions or bought their tunes play live. I enjoyed the seeing different elements of the scene, seeing the architecture, the interior, blah, blah, blah. All these things that I'm really, really interested in. Um, and, you know, there's no better way to experience that kind of thing than being somewhat sober. Again, it's difficult to do. Not everyone can do it. Don't feel like you are a failure if you can't. But I do kind of feel like your raving experience will be improved if you have the ability to be able to do both you can go out sober and you can go out getting on it too. It'll make kind of your night out a little bit better because that will mean also that you're not kind of peaking too early. Like something that I used to do on the regular basis, especially when I used to go out because again, I'd, I'd be treating going out as an escape and not actually going out as an enjoyment. So something has definitely kind of developed over the last couple of years really during the pandemic. So yeah, check out this article. Um, the name of it is a clear head on a Sunday morning is a gift. Um, why DJs and ravers are embracing sobriety. I'd actually post it in the, I'll put it in the description when I upload the clip or whatever, or put it in the description of the podcast so you can check it out if you're interested, because I think it's a really, really good one.